A backtrack from the CDC tonight over how COVID-19 spreads. Official guidance posted Friday said airborne transmission is the primary way the virus is spread. The CDC says new changes to its COVID guidance were posted in error. Guidance that represented a major change in how coronavirus is transmitted. This is not a failure of public health. It's a failure to support and be guided by public health. What was once a win for some health experts quickly returned to frustration. For months, many in the scientific community had been advocating that aerosols spread COVID-19. But the CDC maintains that the virus mainly spreads through large respiratory droplets encountered at close range. We've been frustrated at the health agencies and we've been frustrated that they've been so slow. We had enough evidence in March to have said that aerosols were playing a role. It should have been communicated to the public. But why the frustration? Is the difference between aerosols and droplet transmission that big? And what does this mean for the coronavirus pandemic? To start, aerosols are tiny respiratory particles that linger in the air. They linger longer than droplets, which are larger globs that come from coughing or sneezing. Aerosols can also transfer at a further distance than the six feet average that droplets affect. We spoke to Jose Luis Jimenez, a chemistry professor at the University of Colorado Boulder, who is currently studying aerosol transmission and COVID-19. Aerosols and droplets are the same material, either our saliva or our respiratory fluid, which is the, the liquid that wets in our nose, our respiratory system, right? As we breathe or as we talk, some of those come out of us. And the difference is just their size. Those droplets are big enough that they could also fly and hit someone in the eye on the nostrils or the mouth and they carry the virus, the infection can start that way. Aerosols are balls of the same material, but they're smaller. They can float in the air, and it's just like a smoke. Smoke is an aerosol that we can see. So if an infected person is breathing this, this aerosols in a room that has low ventilation, someone else who's breathing that same air is sharing the room air, can get infected over time. Aerosols indicate airborne transmission. Some experts believe that airborne transmission has an implicit negative connotation, which is why some experts and agencies like the CDC and the World Health Organization are hesitant to believe COVID-19 spreads through aerosols. We acknowledge that uh, there is uh, emerging evidence in this field, and therefore uh, we believe that we have to be open uh, to this evidence and understand its implications. People are smart and they see the contradiction and they say, well, you are a scientist, you are telling me the virus is in the air, but the CDC doesn't say that and I trust the CDC more than I trust you as a scientist. We need to communicate clearly. Yep. When you put up a document at the CDC that you have just testified is accurate, and then it's changed to suggest that the risk is more minimal by someone for some reason, it contributes to the massive confusion that is so, so troubling to scientists and so troubling to people. While aerosol transmission of COVID-19 means that indoor ventilation will be a key factor to protecting against the spread, Dr. Jimenez notes that prevention means sticking with what most scientists like Dr. Anthony Fauci have been recommending. Once you go indoors, there's always gonna be some risk. Besides, you know, wearing a good mask, what becomes really important is the fit. Avoid crowded places, avoid places with low ventilation, speak in as low of a voice as possible. And if you can do it outdoors, you should do it outdoors and you should keep your distance. People think they're safe in circumstances in which they are not. That's the most important thing about the guidance. If the health agency said that, then I think we could really make a big dent in the pandemic.